This video explains how to calculate parallel maxima and minima using the pmax and pmin functions in the R programming language. So without much talk, let's dive into the R code. As a first step in this video, we need to create some example data and we can do that as you can see in lines two and three of the code. So after running these lines of code, two new data objects called x1 and x2 are appearing at the top right. And as you can see, both of these data objects contain vectors with six elements each and the values in these vectors are different numeric values. Now let's assume that we want to return the parallel maxima of these two vectors. Then we can apply the pmax function as you can see in line 5. And within the pmax function we only need to specify the two names of our vector objects x1 and x2. So after running this line of code you can see that another output is returned at the bottom in the RStudio console. And this output shows the parallel maximum values of our vector objects. So the value 2 is the maximum value in the comparison of the two first elements. The value 8 is the maximum value in the comparison of our second elements. The value 5 is the maximum value in the third position and so on. Similar to that, we can use the pmin function to calculate the parallel minima of our vector objects, as you can see in line 7 of the code. So after running this line of code, the parallel minima are returned at the bottom in the RStudio console. It's also possible to apply the pmax and pmin functions to vectors with different length. And this is what I want to show you in the next example, starting in line 9 of the code. So as a first step, I'm creating another example data object that I'm calling x3. And this data object should contain the values of x2 and in addition to that, the values 9 and 3. So after running this line of code, another data object is appearing at the top right and we can print this data object to the bottom by running line 10 of the code. And then you can see that we have created a new data object which contains two additional values. And this also means that the data object x3 that we have just created is longer than the data object x1. So if we apply the pmax function to the data objects x1 and x3, you can see at the bottom in the RStudio console that the warning message in pmax, an argument will be fractionally recycled is returned. However, still you can see that there's a valid output. And this output shows the same values as the previous example of the pmax function for the first six elements. And afterwards, the two additional values are compared with the first two values in our vector x1. So in this case, the value 9 is compared with the value 2. And for that reason, the value 9 is returned because this value is larger and then the value 3 is compared with the value 8 and for that reason the value 8 is returned. Similar to that we can also apply the pmin function to these two vectors as you can see in line 14 of the code. The same warning message is returned, however still you can see that there's a valid output of the pmin function. It is also possible to deal with NA values or missing values using the pmax and pmin functions and to demonstrate that, I'm first going to create another example vector, as you can see in lines 16 and 17 of the code. And then in line 18 of the code, we can print our example vector. And as you can see, this vector contains an NA value at the first position. So if we apply the pmax function to this vector, you can see that the output is also showing the NA value in the first position. So by default, the pmax and pmin functions return NA values in case one of the input values is NA. You can see that also for the pmin function by running line 22. However, what I want to show you is that it's also possible to remove those NA values, as you can see in lines 24 and 26, using the na.remove argument and by setting this argument to be equal to true. So after running line 24 of the code, you can see that another output is returned, which shows a valid value in the first index position. And this value is the value that was not an A in our comparison. 
Similar to that, we can also use the pmin function using the na.remove argument. And as you can see in this case, again, a valid value is returned at the first position. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.